Selected Writings and Speeches of Marcus Garvey The World Gone Mad Force Only Argument to Correct Human Ills We see a new Ethiopia, a new Africa, stretching her hands of influence throughout the world, teaching man the way of life and peace, the way to God. New York City, May 16, 1923 Fellow men of the Negro race, greeting. The world is on fire. The whole human race has gone mad. Man has lost his reason, and now we are in for an age of ruin and destruction that will upset the efforts of the human race for the last 500 years. All this has been brought about by the drunken greed for power on the part of certain races and nations. We are in such a terrible mix-up that one would not wonder if man gets his hell right now and not hereafter. Everywhere you look, and on every side you turn, you come into contact with the undermining influence of one race against the other, the one nation against the other. It is apparent that truth, justice, love, mercy have taken their departure, and all that we have is the reign of selfishness and greed, which will ultimately be the wreck and ruin of our civilization. In all this terrible muddle, 400 million Negroes are called upon to play the part. It is natural that we must take on the spirit of the age, harmful though we know it to be, but we are so situated that we do no better than meet the other fellow on his own grounds. One part of the world is determined to upset the other part. One race is determined to destroy the other for its own selfish existence. And so in this rigid competition for a place and for life, we do no better than strike out in our own direction to save ourselves from this wreck and ruin that threatens. The Universal Negro Improvement Association steps out speaking in unmistakable terms on behalf of our own group. And in language forcible and uncompromising, we call upon each and every member of our race to gird his armor on and be ready for the fray. It is no use talking about settling this human question with prayers and words. It can only be done, it can only be settled by force. This is the only argument that the races and nations of the world understand in the 20th century. England is speaking with force. France is speaking with force. All of the other European powers are speaking with force as their only language. And the races or the people who cannot present to the world organized force will be naturally dragged under the tidal wave of race oppression. England and France are more determined than ever to exploit and subjugate their darker citizens and subjects, their professions notwithstanding. It is no use looking to them in a sense of the larger humanity, because they have lost their Christian souls. Englishmen and Frenchmen no longer think of humanity in the terms of Christian brotherhood, but in terms of pounds and francs. England wants money. France wants money. Italy wants money. Belgium wants money. Portugal and Spain want money. And the only place that they can grind it from today is Africa. Hence, they are making one mad determination to exploit and ravish that country, the land of our fathers, without any consideration for humanity or Christian fellowship. If they profess other than their lust for gold, then we know it is a lie. It is all farce, pretense, hypocrisy. Let Robert Cecil talk and Brian and Mussolini. Their voices will be lost in the wilderness of African hope, because surely we will not hear them. We heard Chatham before we heard Gladstone. We heard Chamberlain, and out of the profession of human love and brotherly consideration, we find that Africa has paid the price in blood and in wealth for the expansion of the British Empire to the loss of millions of native Africans and Negroes everywhere. We are tired of this kind of political hypocrisy. Therefore, we are calling upon the 400 million Negroes of the world to listen to no other voice than that which beckons us to action. The voice that commands us to go further in the name of emancipated race and their African redemption. The voice that says, march on with, that, with the hope of a brighter future, with the throwing off of the influences of the past. We have come to the turning and parting of the ways. The black race needs look no longer to any other race for succor, for advice, for the political help. We must naturally look to ourselves. More and more we become disappointed in all our hopes, disappointed in all our ambitions, depending as we have upon others. In America, we are gradually being thrown off politically and disappointed socially and economically. Within the British Empire, we are only the scapegoats of a sober and seasoned diplomacy. In France, we are only made the dupes of a crafty statesmanship that hopes to profit by the ignorance of those who they deceive. How, therefore, can we depend upon others? Doing so will mean nothing else but our present and future ruin, such as has been in the past. The days of slavery are not gone forever. Slavery is threatened for every race and nation that remains weak and refuses to organize its strength for its own protection. Slavery has no day and no time. It is present when a strong race desires to oppress the weaker race. 
Negroes, be careful of what you do today. No one can tell what our condition will be tomorrow, whether it be slavery or not. We do not strive toward the goal of racial strength, of racial power, political and national independence. Let us rally around the banner of the red, the black and the green, the universal emblem of African redemption. Let us stand by the colors of, as Englishmen stand by the Union Jack, as Frenchmen stand by the tricolors, and as white Americans stand by the stars and stripes. For us, let the vision be fair. Let the vision be one of hope and encouragement. We need not look to the darkness. Africa shall be redeemed. Negroes shall be emancipated, but all depends upon our present deeds, our present acts. Shall we go backward? The Universal Negro Improvement Association answers, no. We have come upon the stage in time to save the entire race from destruction. All that we want is to teach is that each and every one will enter the fold of this great and noble organization and let us unitedly march to our destiny. Turn your attention not away from Africa, because Africa shall be the only salvation and solution of this great problem of race in America and Western world. Africa, the land of our fathers, beckons us home, if not in person, in sympathy, in sentiment, and in moral and financial help. So we shouldn't we help her to throw off the shackles placed upon her by an alien civilization and alien races? Why shouldn't we help her to put flight the enemy within her doors who seeks her very vitals? O oh, Mother Africa, our land of our fathers, to thee we come. To thee we pledge our lives, our manhood, our strength, our all, because through thee and thee alone, we see the avenue to happiness, to peace, to everlasting glory. Ethiopia shall once more arise from the ashes of material ruin to the heights of temporal glory. We see a new Ethiopia, a new Africa, stretching her hands of influence throughout the world, teaching man the way of life and peace, the way to God. He, the great creator himself, inspires others to say of us that princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands. This hour we are stretching forth our hands and with the desire to teach the world the true principles of mercy and justice. The Universal Negro Improvement Association desires the ascendancy of the Negro race, not for the purpose of brutalizing and destroying the hopes of the human race, but for the purpose of giving further encouragement to man to live, live in a true sense, in a sense of brotherhood, in a sense of the common fatherhood. That is the life that we want, the life that the other races have failed to give. That is why the world is in such chaos. That is why the world faces wreck and ruin. That is why the entire world is upset. That is why it faces Africa to save the day. Negroes, again, we appeal to you to come together. Come together in America, the West Indies, South and Central America, and let 400 million of us march toward to the sacred duty that falls upon us, that of saving humanity, that of saving a sinful world. You can help the Universal Negro Improvement Association put over this great program by your moral and financial assistance. Your obedient servant, Marcus Garvey, President General, Universal Negro Improvement Association.